Hi, this is Cheryl Pammer, Senior Advisory Statistician at Minitab. Today I'm going to talk about how real-time SPC can really help you with solving some major challenges within your organization. So let's talk about those challenges now. The challenge that we're going to talk about today is what happens when we underfill or overfill our packaging. Underfilling causes problems because we often have regulations around matching our labeled weight or labeled volume of a product. So if we underfill the product, so for example, we're filling two liter bottles of soda, we're assuring our customers that they are getting two liters of soda. Well, if we underfill that package, there are regulatory challenges and we could find ourselves facing fines and other things. It also leads to customer satisfaction issues because we want customers assume that they're going to get the amount of product that they are paying for. Surprisingly though, underfilling isn't the only problem. Overfilling is a problem as well. We often overfill packaging intentionally to prevent underfilling. We won't get in trouble with regulators when we overfill, but we may have other problems such as leakage or spillage because the product is filled too far. Um, there's also a large cost with overfilling. Specifically, when we put too much product in, we are costing manufacturers millions of extra dollars or extra products. Let's look into that a little more detail. So, the estimates of the overfill costs in general suggest that manufacturers lose about 1 to 5% of their total product volume due to, due to overfilling. When you talk about a large scale manufacturing operation, this amount can be in the millions of dollars. So today we're going to look a little closer at how to prevent this from happening in a beverage company. So this particular beverage company is filling bottles of uh, two liter bottles of soda. And we're going to look at how just a small amount of overfill can lose hundreds of thousands of, of liters of products, which adds up to potentially millions of dollars. So let's look at this closer. We're going to do this by looking at real-time statistical process control or real-time SPC. This solves our challenge of underfilling and overfilling by continuously monitoring and analyzing our data to detect and correct variations before they become issues with underfill and overfill. So we'll use real-time SPC for continuous monitoring, for early detection of problems and deviations, for reducing waste and costs, for improving our product stability and also reducing our pro process variation, and finally to assure that we are in compliance and provide quality assurance. So let's look at our real-time SPC from Minitab. I'm starting with looking at just the fill weight of my pro product from an operator's perspective. So this is an operator on the shop floor. They can actually monitor their fill weight in real time. And if you look at this fill weight closely, what you'll see is they are overfilling these bottles. We have an average fill weight of about 2,051 milliliters for a two liter bottle. So this should be 2,000, but to prevent from underfilling, we're actually doing a fair amount of overfilling. Notice that though, we still are under two liters sometimes. So what we're going to do is actually do some sampling of our process to try and determine how we can keep this process a little more tight in terms of variation and make sure it remains stable, as well as detect when we have fallen below two liters of product. So we can see right here, I have a flag. My process is stable. Everything's remaining inside my specific or my control limits. But right here, I have a flag that something might have been under specification. My specification being 2000 milliliters of product. As I scroll through here, my operator can see right here, there was a product that was only 1,998 milliliters. So I had a defective product right here. What's really, really important is to improve this process, we need to know why defects are happening. So if I wanna explain why I have a defective product right here with a fill weight below two liters, I can click edit and mark an assignable cause. So one of my jobs in quality is to determine my assignable causes 
And the common ones in this case happen to be having a high temperature or low temperature, high temperature possibly shrinking the product, low temperature expanding it, uh, and as well as residue buildup. One of the things I'll try and do today is actually look at other potential assignable causes to things being out of spec. It turns out that low temperature is one of the assignable causes, and that was what they determined was the problem here. And I can also tell what kind of corrective action to take that is listed here. It turned out we went ahead and adjusted the temperature setting so that this didn't continue happening. Notice how I can use real-time SPC to not only verify that I'm in statistical process control, but look at when things are out of specification. Now that's at the operator level. As an engineer and a process improvement expert, I'm going to move to my engineering portal of real-time SPC and look at this a little closer. So I have this specific filling machine that I'm looking at, and what I want are the details around what's going on in this filling machine. Now that I click the details, I can look at other things in addition to just the fill weight, which is my main outcome variable, to potential input variables like how tightly the package is sealed, how the carbonation is changing over time, how fast or slowly things are flowing through my system, etc. Here's my temperature, which I know um, is probably an important variable. I'm following that as well. And then finally, my fill weight. Now, one thing I want to do is look at more than just the last few hours. I'm going to choose the last two weeks or last 14 days to actually look at this process over time. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I can look at many variables, but let's just focus on the fill weight right now. Over the last two weeks, every time we see a little red box, we know that either the process was not stable or that I actually had somewhere in my sampling of my process, I had a value that was out of specification. When sampling this process, I've also set this up so it's automatically doing my sampling for me. In other words, the filling machine collects several observations, and I could look at every single fill weight if I wanted to, but instead I'm going to use good statistical sampling for monitoring this process. Good statistical sampling, one method, is collecting data in subgroups. And what I'm doing here is collecting five subgroups every hour. So that's what these observations represent. Five subgroups an hour, or five observations an hour form a subgroup. And I can look at different subgroups over time to make sure my process is first stable. But we can also look at where within a subgroup we have something that's not capable of meeting specification. So here I have my target specification, which is set quite a ways above 2,000 milliliters. Here it is, right? Um, we are overfilling these bottles, as we know, in order to try and meet our lower specification limit of 2,000 milliliters. That's our lower specification limit. Notice we're quite a ways above target, and we still have a lot out of specification. So right now, Reducing the target fill weight to something smaller isn't going to help us because we'll have more out of specification. So we are required to overfill these bottles, but how can we solve this problem? We can reduce the variation so this bell-shaped curve is more tight and stays above specification. And then once we've reduced the variation, we might actually be able to reduce our target fill weight so that we still can be above 2,000 milliliters. How do we do that? Well, we have Minitab available to us, and we can click this button. That'll take us to a Minitab spreadsheet. We can look at in Minitab. And I did a real quick, using Minitab's predictive analytics module and automated machine learning of this data to actually see what was driving these fill weights. I'm not overly surprised. The top driver, according to the automated model that came up was temperature having the biggest impact on what my fill weight is. So I might want to more con concentrate more often on monitoring temperature so that my fill weight stays where it needs to be. I can also look at the flow rate, how quickly things are moving, and the carbonation level to basically 
get a better handle on what's going on in my process with regard to fill weight. I can also see that as my temperature increases, my fill weight increases. This is really important because if I could more carefully control my temperature in my environment, then I'll be able to more carefully control my fill weight. That's probably my biggest driver for reducing variation. I can also see that my flow rate impacts my fill weight as well. If I'm at a lower flow rate, my fill weight stays a little lower. It starts to increase as my flow rate increases. As I increase flow rate, I gain variation in um, the amount of fill weight. So I might want to slow down my flow rate just to reduce the variation in fill weight. I can see I, my carbonation level has the same kind of pattern. It stays constant for a while and then my carbonation level goes up, then my fill weight starts to move as well. So I have a couple of opportunities or ideas of how I can get things back into a reduced variation state as well as stay in process control. So hopefully you've seen today that there are many ways that we can use real-time SPC to greatly improve the ability to keep a filling process both stable but also reduce its variation and ideally keep things in specification. Real-time SPC has given me some opportunity that now as an engineer I need to jump on. Thank you for spending some time with me today as we looked at real-time SPC, real, also some predictive analytics in order to improve your process and improve the bottom line.